Hey guys, Cody Barramonte here. Today, we're gonna get the lowdown on stainless steel from Vinny from VC Metalworks. Vinny, tell us a little bit about yourself. How you doing, guys? Um, been primarily TIG welding for about the last 10 years. MIG fabrication work, hot rod specialty fab work. I started out, I wanna say 2012. TIG welding, I've been doing it for about 10 years now. Uh, bounced around to a few different companies, trying to start my own thing now. So, you know, just looking to grow here. Well, it's awesome having a pro in the shop. He's gonna show us machine setup. He's gonna show us how to weld stainless with and without pulse and really what you're looking for and how to dial in your work. So let's get some tubing on the table and get started. Sounds good. So this is the new TIG 200 LCD from Eastwood. It's an AC-DC machine, so we're gonna be able to do alternating and direct current on this. Jumping into the direct current TIG process here, we are using a foot pedal right now. So we'll select the foot pedal model. This kind of gives you more than your standard TIG weld is going to show you. This gives you a lot of options to kind of adjust every small detail of what you want the welder to do here. So if we're going to set up for just a straight DC current, we'll go to peak amps and we'll set this around 100 amps here. If we move over here, we can go to downslope, end amps, and then post flow. Post flow is important. It's going to be our shielding gas cooling the puddle when we finish. I usually typically run about four to five seconds. You can give or take a second on how much heat you're running, depending on the application that you're welding. But again, these are all great settings, a lot of versatility in this machine, so we should be able to lay down some nice stuff today. First thing that I think is important is to identify and make sure that we actually have stainless steel. Um, one way to do that is with a simple trick of a magnet. We have here some square stock, mild steel, as you can see, magnetic, stainless steel, nothing. One of the important things in my opinion when welding stainless is to keep stainless stainless. Um, the way that we do that is there's a few different tricks. We can use chill bars, we can do back purging, um, but the one thing that people need to understand is that the amount of heat input that you put into stainless steel can render it into a mild steel by reducing all the chromium levels that are in it. Okay, so we have a slip fit here which creates a lap joint and we'll get to showing you guys how to set your torch up here and then we'll get started laying beads. This here is a WP17F. The F stands for flex. That's gonna give you the ability to position the torch the way that you want. Uh, we are also running a stubby gas lens kit on this. I prefer to run a gas lens kit. It allows you to increase your CFH on your shielding gas and it gives you a, a little bit better coverage. So right now we're currently running this Pyrex cup. Looks like a number eight. And then we have a 330 second multi-mix tungsten. So that's gonna be good for all your AC DC applications. So one thing we do want to touch base on real quick is how to set our gas up on a TIG welder. Whether we're running AC or DC, we're going to run a straight argon tank. And we're also going to set our machine up here right about 30 to 40 CFH, which is cubic feet per hour of shielding gas. Just to reiterate on this, when you're doing a back purging system or you're using a chill bar or something like that and you want to fill your tube, typically anywhere between 5 and 10 CFH is going to be good for your purging system. All right, guys, so one thing that we're going to run into is a common issue of heat control on your material. Um, some people have a tendency to run too hot, some people have a tendency to run too cold. Uh, what I'm going to do here is two different passes, one too hot, one too cold, and we're going to show you the results and um, hopefully how to avoid them. So the first pass we're going to do here, I have my, sh my machine set at 150 amps, which is far too hot for this material. And you'll see when I light up on it. Basically what I'm going to do is keep it around 80% of the pedal. I don't want to blow a hole through this, but I do want to show you guys what happens when you're too hot and your pedal starts to run. Um, so I'll arc up, I'll ease into it, and then I'll kind of overflow the heat on it, and you'll see the puddle wash away. And again, we're going to approach it slow, and I'll create my puddle, but then what I'm going to do here is use about 80% of my puddle to show you guys what happens. So I go down, and you can see the puddle is kind of running all over the place. My filler rod is sinking into the puddle. It's almost like it wants to fall right through the material and just create a hole. Now, when I terminate this weld, what you're gonna see is a bunch of gray, and it almost looks like there's porosity inside the weld, next to no color. So, what you're seeing here is what's called burn through or sugar. All it is is oxide. Uh, this results in a weak weld. Uh, it'll probably still hold for a little bit, but the longevity of the weld's not gonna be there. Any high stress or high tension on it could potentially crack this weld much faster than if we purge this and we got good results on the backside. Now we're gonna transition over. I have my welder set at 70 amps right now, which still is more than enough for me to get a good weld on this material, but I'm gonna just utilize my pedal, back off a little bit, and I'll probably keep it around somewhere around 30 to 35 amps, which is gonna to be too cold to weld this, too cold to melt this 16th wire. And what you guys are gonna end up seeing is the wire balling up. Uh, we'll get a very tall weld. It hasn't been sunken into the material at all. So let me arc up and I'll show you guys how this looks. So again, right here, I just initiated, I'm only about 15% of my pedal right now, 
And if your amplitude is maxed out at a too low of an amperage, what's gonna happen here is I go to fill this and I can't really melt my wire here. And what you end up with is basically a slug sitting on top of your material instead of in your material. And that's a good indication that you're too cold. You can either increase your heat on your machine or you can depress your pedal farther to create more heat into your piece. This particular project, we're gonna start on a direct current. So we're just running 100 straight amps. We're gonna be using a foot pedal to control our heat. Um, one thing I do wanna disclose is that we are not back purging. We do not have chill bars. So the possibility of getting a little bit of burn through or sugaring or oxides on the backside of this material, it's there, but we're gonna do our, our best to reduce it. So we're gonna get started right now. I'm gonna throw my helmet on. I'll show you guys how to arc up, start, tack, keep everything where you want it to be so that it doesn't pull on you. And then we'll be off to the races on showing you the technique of how to actually dip and rip. Okay, so typically when I approach a job like this, what I wanna do is make sure that my material is tacked in uh, a general rule of thumb is if this is three or four inch material, you wanna run four tacks on all the corners here just to kind of keep it from pooling or warping in one direction when you start your pass. Um, I do recommend anything that's larger than this, you increase the amount of tacks that you put on the material just to stop from any bending, warping, or, or uh, misforming of, of the metals here. Um, today we are gonna be using 308L, which is typically used to join 304 to 304. So we'll, we'll get started here, I'll lay down four tacks on this material, and then we'll go from there. All right, so one thing you can see I did here, I added some filler wire to my tack. Um, just to touch base on something, if you guys are not using filler wire and you're just using your two materials to blend, some people will call that either a fusion weld or, or it's called autogenous welding. Basically, it just means we're not using any filler rod to not overcomplicate it. So this is what that would look like. And basically all we're doing here is a, just a quick snap of the pedal to disperse the heat and join the two materials together. All right guys, so one thing that I like to do when I'm welding on anything that's uh, shaped like a circle or round is I like to create a stationary workplace for me. Uh, TIG welding, you end up using a lot of your extremities and the last thing I want to do is fight to keep this thing straight while I'm using my filler rod, controlling my torch, controlling my heat on my pedal. So again, what I like to do, choose a vice, table vice, something like this. This is gonna give you a stationary workspace. And this is gonna allow me to use this without worrying about holding the piece up while I'm working. All right, so when we get started here, I'm gonna work my way around. Um, I'm gonna talk you through a couple things that I do when I fire up the arc and uh, get started here. So typically I like to start on one of the tacks that I did. And what I'm gonna do is turn that tack into a puddle before I start adding wire. Once I have a puddle liquefied, I will start to move and add my wire accordingly to create the bead profile that I'm looking for here. And all I'm really doing here, because this is a lap joint, is I'm pointing my tungsten at about a 45 degree angle between the two pieces. And I'm just filling until I have a nice 45 degree profile from the upper piece of material to the lower piece of material. And when I terminate my weld, I'm gonna back off my pedal real slow, let the puddle solidify in front of me, and then I'm gonna let my post flow sit on the bead. And that is one simple pass. All right guys, so one thing I like to do here after I make one pass, when I'm starting my second pass, instead of Starting on top of where I terminated my last weld, what I like to do is backtrack about two beads maybe. One and a half is fine as long as you're arcing up on a previous uh, filler bead, uh, I don't think you're gonna have any issues. Um, otherwise you could run the risk of leaking where your tie-ins are. So I'll drop my hood here, I'll start back about one and a half beads and then we'll move forward from there. So again, I'm arcing up light, very light percentage on my TIG pedal, waiting to get a liquefied puddle here. Once the puddle starts to liquefy, I can introduce my filler wire. And again, it's the same concept, 45 degree angle on your tungsten. And we're just dipping our filler rod until we achieve the bead profile that we're looking for. Terminate your weld slow and let your post flow cover your bead. Again, we'll rotate, start a couple beads back, arc up slow, 
create your puddle, introduce your filler wire, and start moving. Now, the key here is to always keep your torch moving as fast as you can without running away from your puddle. One tip that I usually try to practice is keeping my tungsten about 90 degrees from my material. If I start to angle my torch too much, I could cut off the, the gas flow to the previous speeds. And if I start to angle it in the other direction too much, I could run the risk of not getting any shielding gas on the bead I'm currently running. One thing that's important is to always maintain a sharp tungsten. If you dip it, if you stick your filler rod into it and you start to get a little ball on the end of your tungsten, stop what you're doing immediately, sharpen your tungsten, it's gonna make everything nice and consistent for you instead of having a, like a sloppy bead where it turns into too much liquid because you don't have a controlled arc and your bead will kind of be running all over the place. It's called bead overflow. Um, and that's kind of what we're trying to avoid with uh, by keeping our tungsten sharp consistently. All right guys, so what we have here, if you can see, we ended up with a bit of a gap, and this is a good example for when I would switch over to a pulse setting. Uh, switching to a pulse setting kind of allows you to hit the filler material and spread it out pretty quickly, and it'll fill this gap versus if I have something like this 116 filler wire and I'm running an 060 material here, what could potentially happen here is by the time I get the filler rod melted to introduce it into the bead, I could have already blown away the material that I'm trying to blend. So we'll switch over to a pulse setting here. I'll slap some beads in here and show you guys, um, you know, just how efficient that can be. All right, so I'm gonna switch the welder from uh, DC to a uh, pulse setting here. We're gonna go 100 amps. We're gonna leave it at about 100 amps on our peak. Uh, I'm gonna run 30% on my peak time. We'll set this at one pulse per second today. And our base amp is gonna be 5% of 100. So we'll be running about 5% on our background. What I like to do is introduce the wire first. So I'm gonna push my wire all the way up against the previous bead. I'm still gonna practice the same two, two beads back to start, and then we'll roll forward from there. Um, introducing the filler, wad, the filler wire previously kind of eliminates a, a keyhole from starting here when you initially arc. So again, I'm still gonna use my pedal to control my heat. I'm gonna go in soft, and once I have um, a puddle initiated, that's when I can go full throttle, and I'll kind of walk it around, and uh, we'll, we'll close this gap up here. So I go in light, you know, barely down on the pedal here. And I'm just finding the pedal, the pedal depth that I want to, to get the heat input that I need. And now that I have my puddle, I'm kind of just gonna slap this wire right into the gap. And we're kind of keeping the wire pressed up against the puddle the whole time. The background amperage is gonna allow you to get puddle freezing so you don't have to worry about the filler rod slipping off or slipping too deep into the puddle. Again, we'll run our post flow, and that gives you a good bead all the way around. No gaps, no keyholes, nothing blown open. Perfect example of when we would use a pulse setting. Well, Vinny, that was awesome. I know I learned a bunch. I'm sure that'll help a lot of people really, you know, dial in how they weld stainless. How can people get a hold of you? Uh, right now, you guys can reach me on Instagram at VC Metalworks with an X. Uh, I'm working on establishing my own shop right now, as well as developing a website for you guys to be able to use in the future. Uh, but in the meantime, right now, just on Instagram, again, that's VC Metalworks with an X. Well, really impressive again. You know, I think that'll really help people get their stainless steel stuff dialed in. Really good, you know, introduction to Pulse and really explaining how to get that set up and where to use it. So thanks again for coming out. Awesome. Happy to help.